Hi everyone, it's Zinnia here. Today I wanted to show you how to make an open world game in Scratch. By the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to make your own game like this one, where you can have a character walking around an endless world that you design, and they can talk to other characters and more. Let's get started. So first, let's pick a character to be the main character of your project. You can just click on this button that says choose a sprite and pick absolutely any character you want to be the main character in your world. I think for this example project, I will pick the scratch cat. So how do you make this character walk around this giant, endless seeming background? Well, actually, the way we can do it is the character in the middle won't move. We're going to make a giant sprite to be the background and that sprite will move around. So let me show you how to do that. We can make a sprite like that by hovering over choose a sprite and clicking paint. What I like to do is click convert to bitmap to switch into bitmap mode where it's easy to draw directly on the canvas. So my simple way of making a map is first I'm just going to click on the rectangle tool and click on the color and set the color to something in the blue range because I'm just going to make a big sort of ocean to be the base of the map. And I will drag, click and drag out a rectangle and fill the whole screen. Now to draw some land on top of it, I'll set the color to green and I will click on the paintbrush tool and I'm just gonna scribble random pieces of land on top of the ocean. It can really be anything you want. I'm not doing any particular pattern. And now I can uh, use the fill bucket to fill in any spaces that I want to be land, uh, because basically this gives you a pretty basic map. You could of course use whatever colors you want instead. I'll make this map go to the back layer when the green flag is clicked so that it's behind the main character. Anyway, now that we have our map, how can we make it big so that our character can walk around a giant version of this map? Well, you can click on size here and try increasing the size, but it won't let you increase the size past a certain point. But here is a trick for getting around that. Let's go to the costumes tab and let's paint a new costume and just draw one tiny dot. So this is a costume that's really small. If I go back to the code tab and switch the costume to blank costume, and then set the size to something really big, like a thousand percent. Okay, it lets me set the size to be really big of this still blank costume. And now I can switch the costume back to the map costume and there you go. Now you have a giant version of the map. So this is a trick that will let you set any sprite to a large size. Now let's make it so that when the player presses the arrow keys, this map moves underneath the character. To make the map move, we can go to the motion category and use these blocks, change X by 10 and change Y by 10. Let's drag out the block change Y by 10 and see what happens. Okay, so that makes the backdrop move this way. And it kind of looks like the player is walking downward. So let's make this happen when the down arrow key is pressed. I can go to the events category and drag out a when space key pressed block and choose down arrow from the menu and then put this on top of this. And now when I click the down arrow, uh, it looks like the player is walking down the map. And I could put in a larger number like 20 to make it move a bit more every time I press the button. And if I drag out another change Y block and put in negative 20, that will make the backdrop move in the opposite direction. So that kind of looks like the character is moving upwards on the map. So I can drag out a when up arrow key pressed block and put that on top. So now you can walk up and down the map with the up and down arrow keys. And let's make it so the player can move left and right. So 
if you drag out this block change x by 10, that will make the map move this way. So let's make that 20, actually. And let's make that happen when the left arrow key is pressed. And if you change x by negative 20, it goes this way, so we can make that happen when the right arrow key is pressed. So now, it looks like the character can walk all around the map. Oh, and I'll make the map start at 0, 0 when the green flag is clicked. Now, let me show you how to add a character or an object to the world that the player could find as they walk through it. What I do is I make a duplicate of the map sprite so that this character has all the same code as the map because we want this character or object to move around as the map moves around. And then the next thing I'll do is go to the costumes tab. I'll keep this blank costume because that will help us do the size trick, but I'll delete the map costume and I'll draw a new costume and I'll convert to bitmap mode again because in a vector mode sometimes when the drawings get set to a large size they get sort of blurry. So anyway, I've converted to bitmap and I'll zoom in to a really small level so that I'm drawing at a really small size and I'll click on the paintbrush and set the size to one and I'll just draw, you could draw anything, I'll draw my favorite kind of blob, pretty easy, and do two lines for the eyes. And maybe I'll pick a lighter purple color to be the color for the blob, and I'll use the fill bucket to fill it in. And in Scratch, in order for this blob character to move exactly the same as the map moves, the borders of the sprite have to be the same as the borders of the map sprite. So basically it needs to have a border around this edge. And an easy way to do that is you can just use the rectangle tool and create thin rectangles all around the edges of the your blob or your character or object or whatever it is. Now let's check and make sure that the code from the map will still work for this character and there are a couple changes we need to make and these will be the same changes for any character or item you want to add. Since this character uh, shouldn't be on the back layer, it should be in front of the map, we want to get rid of this go to back layer block and then also this block that says switch costume to map, we don't want to do that, we want to switch the costume to costume one because that's the costume that this character has. So that's the other thing you'll need to change. Anyway, let's try it out. So I'll click the green flag. Ah, and there we go. There is our character and we can run into them in the world. And, you know, one thing we could add is we could make it so that this character says something like, hello, when we click on it. So if we put the when this sprite clicked block on top, now we can walk up to the character and it says hello to us. And one last thing I'll mention for when you're making your projects, if you wanted to change the location that this character appears at within the map, the way you can do that is go to the costumes tab and you can change the location of this sprite within the costume. So wherever you put it within this costume, that's where it will appear. Anyway, that's what I wanted to show you today. Um, if you want to use the starter code for this project that I just made, um, the link is in the description below. And yeah, I can't wait to see the open world games that you make. Uh, I'll see you next time. And scratch on!